Here I have a couple Turbo 400 transmissions. The one on the right has a AMC bell housing bolt pattern and the one on the left has a Buick Wells Pontiac bell housing bolt pattern. What I need to do is get the short tail shaft and tail shaft housing onto this AMC transmission. To do that the whole thing has to come apart. And since it's apart I'm going to go ahead and uh, put all new clutches and steels in it and do a blueprint on it. Now, I'm not a professional transmission builder. This is not a how-to video, but more of a documentary of what I'm doing. And it can give you some ideas of uh, what you can do with a transmission. The last time I did this, I did it about 10 years ago using this book. And out of the book I was able to make a, a blueprint spec sheet. We got about three pages worth of specs in here. And we'll work through most of those. We're also going to throw a trans pack in the transmission when we're done to try to get a nice firm shift out of it. Here's the BNM Master Race Overhaul Kit. I picked this kit because uh, it comes with all the bushings. It has some Rebestus clutches, some Kevlar bands, some. Uh, these are red alto frictions and all the soft seals. Here I've uh, cleaned my table off and uh, I know that my table is going to stay undisturbed so it's going to be a good place to do this. It's going to take me several days to uh, get my new trans together. I'm not even going to attempt to talk about theory and how the transmission works. Uh, if you want to do that, get the book, research it yourself. It would have been nice to clean this trans but uh, it was already opened up so I'll just uh, clean the case once I got it all apart. Here's the vacuum modulator. And the spool valve. This is the governor cover. It's held on by four bolts. I'm being very careful not to uh, damage the journals inside the aluminum case transmission. The speedo gear would have been right there. This case uh, has the boss but it's not machined. Not sure what I'm going to do about that yet. I'll have to research it. The reason for that is uh, the speedo for this uh, truck was fed off the transfer case. Before I go any farther I'm going to measure rear end play and front end play with a dial indicator. Basically just pushing the shaft all the way back and forward, seeing what you got there. Here's a look at uh, front end play check. About 40 thousandths there. A little bit on the loose side, uh, 24 thousandths is the recommended max according to the book. These end play measurements are controlled by selective thickness thrust washers, and you can change them up and uh, bring that back in the spec. Here we got our rolled over, taking the pan off. Actually, had to put some wedges on this. Uh, AMC trans ain't nearly as stable as a BOP trans. There's the filter and valve body. Fine shavings are better than coarse shavings. I'm going to go ahead and uh, clean this up so I can put my valve body in it. Here's a look at the filter. It just uh, kind of floats on this bolt and is held in by the uh, fill tube over here. Bolt removed. Taking the uh, filter out. Taking the fill tube out. unplug detent wire from case connector. Here I'm taking off the uh, detent spring and roller assembly. All the valve body bolts are backed off. Try to pry these uh, governor tubes up a little bit. Now before I go any further I'm going to get this manual uh, spool valve out of there before I drop it. Be very careful not to uh, raise any burrs. Lifting off the valve body. There's a filter on this governor tube. Zip off the detent solenoid. Here's a look at the valve body gaskets. V for uh, valve body, your separator plate. C for case gasket. If I wanted to just change the uh, tail shaft, I could stop dismantling it at this point. Here's the bolt that holds that center support in. 
but uh, we're doing the full Monty here. Taking off the rear servo cover. Taking out the rear servo assembly. And piston. Now we will remove the check balls out of the labyrinth. And uh, this trans has six of them. Your trans may have four to six depending on the year. And uh, depending, may have less depending if it has a shift kit in it. So what do we have here? One. Right, pretty tough to see that one. Two, three, four, five, and six. Here I'm grabbing the uh, front servo piston pin so I can get the setup out of there. Spring. And take the front pump out of it now. Got a mess going on here. Here's the back side of the uh, front pump and a thrust washer. Here I'm going to pull the uh, forward clutch and input shaft assembly from the case. Here's a look at the uh, forward clutch. Here's the forward clutch to direct clutch drum uh, washer. I'm going to keep it with this. Here's the direct clutch. Here's the front band. Just got a pop it out of here and it comes right out. Here's the sun gear shaft. Pull that out of there. I'm doing a full teardown on this so I'm going to take out the manual shaft loosening this uh, jam nut here. Next I'm going to take out this uh, Number four nail, the front pump actually holds that in. And then uh, we'll go ahead and take the rest of the stuff out of here. Before you do that, you wanna make sure there's no burrs on that shaft. You don't wanna mess up the case. Take the uh, two bolts out the back here to get the rest of it out. Here's the parking pole. I'm just gonna leave that in there and take this uh, spring off of it for now. Remove the bolt that holds the uh, center support in. Got a 12 point thin wall socket, 3 8 inch. Remove a retaining ring that holds in the uh, intermediate clutch plates. Here's a look at the intermediate clutch stack. Bottom plate was a wavy plate. Now I'm going to attempt to remove the uh, center support to case retaining ring. Here it is, I pulled it out just like this. Note that uh, there is a beveled side to it. Now I'm going to grab the uh, forward end of the main shaft and get the rest of the works out of here. Not much left in there. We got the uh, four tab output shaft case thrust uh, washer. And then we got the uh, three tang uh, selective thickness washer. We got a case saver ring in here between the uh, center support and the case. Saves on the aluminum. And the rear band is in there. At this point, it's pretty much torn down. Uh, I'll give you a look at the back of this trans. You can see why the uh, output shaft had to come out the front. I went ahead and degreased the case myself, pressure washed it. I was able to get uh, about 95% of the stuff off of it. Inside actually came really clean. And what I'm gonna do now is actually uh, take all this flashing off the case. There's just a ton of it on this uh, this casting. I'm gonna do that with a uh, die grinder and a non-ferrous grinding burr. 
wearing a respirator, gloves, and uh, having eye protection on, of course. I got the tranny on a piece of foam here. At no point will the uh, gasket surface of that valve body touch anything but something soft. You don't want to scratch it. Here's the uh, speedo housing in the donor trans. You take a clip off and it just pulls right out of there. And here is my speedo housing. You can see that it's cast into this uh, transmission. And this is about 135 thousandths larger. I considered dropping the case off, having it machined. I considered um, putting this on a lathe, turning it down, because I couldn't find one that would fit how the uh, the case is machined right now. But my final decision is just to keep my eyes open for a Turbo 400 in a two-wheel drive configuration case that uh, will fit an AMC. Don't really need a Speedo right now, it'd be nice, but uh, I just want to move forward with the project. Here the case has been cleaned, it was degreased and pressure washed a couple times. Uh, compressed air was blown through all the passages, including the, uh, the test port here. And she came really clean, you can see there isn't, uh, there isn't a single drop of transmission fluid in this case, nor a shaving or a piece of dirt. So from this point forward I'm going to have to be real careful not to contaminate the case. The next thing I'll do is mic the, uh, the case bushing and the output shaft. I've already stolen the output shaft out of our donor trans that we're going to be using. I'm going to be using a telescoping gauge and what you do is you just uh, compress it, tighten up the end of it, put it in the bushing, and release it. Then you put a little tension on it, you rock it, looking for the, uh, the largest point. Takes a little practice. And then you mic it with a micrometer. Of course the uh, bushing has to be installed because there's a certain amount of crush to it. And then we'll be uh, subtract subtracting the distance of this output shaft journal from that and see what we get. And it's the same basic principle for all the uh, all the bushings in the whole transmission. I'm not gonna go through measuring each one and showing you that. I'm just gonna tell you that this bushing spec, that bushing spec. Now I've checked my uh, case bushing and it's in spec, but I'm just going to change it out anyway for uh, video purposes. And this particular bushing, I don't know how well you can see it, but actually it's supposed to protrude 40 to 55 thousandths past the case. And it's also directional. The oil gets exhausted towards the inside of the case. And I'll be driving it out and driving it in with a bushing driver. We'll uh, insert our driver. You can send it out. I'm going to clean it, make sure I didn't raise any crap, and I'll drive the new one in. So again, here I'm checking uh, the installed bushing size. Checking uh, output shaft journal size. Subtracting the difference and writing it on my spec sheet. And as we go along, I'm going to fill in this sheet. Here we got 4,000 clearance. Uh, according to the book, the max they want is 8. So we're good there. And uh, I'm not going to go over every single spec in this rebuild. 
There's manuals out there if anyone's interested in that information. Here's the shifter shaft seal. I'm just going to send that home. The old one was removed during cleaning with a, uh, with a screwdriver from the inside to the outside. I'm going to work in the reverse direction now and putting the trans back together. So we're going to start cleaning uh, pieces that go in first and get them uh, back in the case. So here's your center support. You can see there's a washer in there. This is the reaction carrier assembly. Here's the Torrington bearing. I'm going to keep that with the uh, center support for now. This ring here is called the front internal gear ring. Here's the sun gear. Here's the uh, thrust washer and our output carrier assembly. Inside the output carrier assembly you can see there's a uh, Torrington bearing. We're going to go ahead and uh, remove the output shaft and have a look at that. Here I got a piece of wood I just chuck up on the vise for uh, this stuff. And everything gets cleaned after it touches this thing, but this is just for uh, checking purposes and disassembly. There's a snap ring on this output carrier assembly that's holding the output shaft in. So I'll try to work that off now and get that out of there. And there's the output shaft. Here I'm taking out the uh, the main shaft and the rear internal gear. Here's the rear internal gear and main shaft. There's a Torrington bearing on either side of it. And a look at the output shaft carrier assembly. Here's a look at the two output shafts side by side. You can see the, uh, the big difference there. Behind it's another yoke. I'm gonna have to have a new drive shaft made for the Javelin. Since I'm not using the speedo gear, I'm going to go ahead and take that off by just pushing this little tab in here. She slides right off. That hole you see there is actually uh, a blind hole. The next bushing we're going to spec out here is this one inside the uh, output shaft. That rides on this uh, rear internal gear. There was some excessive clearance from my output shaft bushing to the uh, your internal gear journal. So that one's been replaced. So the output shaft has uh, <clears throat> been inspected for general cracks and uh, defects. Bushing's been checked. The uh, journals have been checked for wear, scoring. The governor gear has been checked. And uh, looks good enough for my transmission. Now I'm going to show you how I'm going to wash it. And uh, from this point forward, basically every piece in this transmission is going to be thoroughly looked over and washed in this fashion and if anything's wrong it's going to be addressed. I have a couple five gallon buckets with odorless mineral spirits in it, a gallon in each, and I'm just going to uh, put the piece in there, wash it, then rinse it in the second bucket and then uh, blow it off with compressed air. Here's the main shaft and rear internal gear, again checking all splines for uh, chipping and wear. Before I go any farther with it, I'm going to uh, spec out these bushings in the sun gear shaft. There's two in it, to here and here, and it rides on the main shaft. My sun gear shaft bushings were in spec, but I've uh, pretty much decided to change out every bushing in this trans whether it needs it or not. So I just took a long screwdriver and uh, tap them out from the opposite side. Here's a look at one of them Torrington bearings that rides uh, next to that rear internal gear and its races. Get these all cleaned up. Here's our output carrier. Besides uh, doing all our regular wear checks, we're going to check for the uh, end play on the planetary pinions. Stick a feeler gauge in here, and uh, we're looking for between 9 and 24 thousandths on each of those. And we'll uh, spec those out 
Here's our reaction carrier assembly and you see a roller clutch in there. We'll be taking that out, checking all the rollers for uh, any galling. Check the springs, check the cage, make sure it isn't bent. And I guess if any of the rollers fall out easily, it's a sign that uh, you may want to replace that. There is a bushing in this reaction carrier that rides on the uh, center support. Check the uh, the band friction surface, and we'll uh, spec out the end play on these uh, planetary pinions. We're taking a look at the center support now. You can see that uh, there's a Torrington bearing that uh, goes in the back of it, and there's a washer that goes down in there. The center support flipped over. We're just going to depress this. Uh, intermediate uh, clutch spring retainer plate down and get the snap ring out of here. Take out the intermediate clutch piston. And then we're going to remove these uh, four oil seal rings on the center support. I just replaced the, uh, the bushing in the uh, center support. This is measured to the sun gear shaft. So that's been specced. And uh, now we can go ahead and clean this up. We'll be putting new lip seals on this piston and uh, reinstalling it all and having an air check. Before we do that, we're going to clearance these uh, seals here that go in the center support to the uh, direct drum. And here are the center support seal rings. I have one in the direct drum bore. Trying to measure end clearance is pretty tough though because these, uh, these particular rings actually interlock. The ones I took out actually uh, are wedge shaped. And we'll also measure side clearance when they're mounted in the center support and put those on our spec sheet. Here I have a .0015 uh, blade for my feeler gauge. Tight side clearance. Here's our intermediate clutch piston. It's got a couple seals on it. Go ahead and uh, pull those off, clean this up, and put some new seals on it. I'm getting ready to put my uh, piston back in my center support. I have a lip seal tool. It's just a uh, piece of wire and then a tube that's crushed onto it. And I'll be uh, lubing everything up with this uh, tranny fluid right here. And this can be one of the, these lip seals can be tricky. But when we're done, we'll do an air check and make sure that uh, that we got it in there correctly. Put the rest of the center support back together now. I'm gonna do an air check in my uh, my piston now to make sure that I didn't mess up that lip seal. Put the uh, direct clutch drum up on here. Put a little air to the apply hole now. You can see the piston's working like a champ. Here's that Torrington bearing. That's uh, gonna go in right here. See, we're gonna be lubing everything with trans fluid. There's a washer that goes in the back of the center support. I'm going to get the uh, reaction carrier ready for assembly. Here's my roller clutch. I'm going to lube it up and uh, put it back in there. The right direction. Put this output carrier assembly back together here. Got a little trans fluid in there. Torrington bearings in place. Got this Torrington bearing in place and we'll uh, put our output shaft on there. A little lube on them bushings. I 
And then the retaining ring goes on. We're going to go ahead and put this uh, four tab washer in now. I'm going to install the uh, sun gear on to the, uh, the main shaft now with the chamfered edge down. I'm going to take this ring, put it over the uh, output carrier, and then we'll uh, try to get the reaction carrier on all this. Here's the sun gear shaft, we'll stick that in right now. Drop this uh, Torrington bearing and race on here now. Get it lined up. And I'm going to install the center support, that washer in there. see the uh, center support only rotates one direction so that clutch is doing its job. Here we've had our band soaking in transmission fluid for a while. We're going to put that in in a minute. But first we'll put our, uh, our case, case saving ring in and our selective thrust washer. She gets held to the bottom there by them three tabs. So the band uh, it's located by three pins, and uh, two pins are integral to the case. We'll put it on those two pins. 